Perfect. So this is like a, a game that you played. It actually serves a very good example of what you just talked about, where you just get a position, and I'm going to try to teach you a few kind of not like general rules because you're already at the level where general rule is not going to work, but more pattern based recognition, uh, you know, in this type of position, this is what you should look for, uh, kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's as an intermediate player, that's where chess is the most interesting. So, you know, like for example, you start out with, do you mostly play King spawn or mix? I play. Okay. Uh, I mostly play E. Lately, I've been playing mostly E4, then D4 sometimes. Um, I like G3 as well. And um, Knight F3, I also sometimes play, but that's it. Okay, so yeah, you're you're totally like you just you play, play anything and. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's a, that's a very it it is very unique because. And that, that might tie back to the fact that you don't want to feel like you're solving anything or just doing some preparation. Because, for example, so this guy plays like Sicilian. I even saw you had a few games like this with, with Black, like sometimes you play Sicilian. Mm -hmm. right? uh, and in the Sicilian, like in every set of openings, there's something called a gambit, which I'm sure you are familiar with. Do you, are, are you, how familiar are you with it? I suppose is a better question. With gambits in general, or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, familiar in terms of yeah, I've seen, I've seen a couple. Um, okay, and I've never really studied much, so I just know from like what I do with these matches. What I've been doing actually is mostly I play and then I rewatch it in uh, with the mm -hmm. solver thing that the site o offers. Yeah, and I just check uh, because there there are always like three or four spots in the situation where I feel I'm kind of hitting a roadblock, and then I just want to see what what uh, the engine suggests, and yeah. uh, that's mostly how I how I improve. It's it's a little bit tricky. Um, it's 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 a little bit tricky, I should say, when you get a lot of different positions within the first 10 moves is the way I can describe it. So, yeah. you know, for example, like, cause every, every opening you play has a structured kind of game plan. So as far as this one goes, like, you know, you play, you play knight out, uh, he plays d6. And now generally speaking, the move here that white is supposed to play is d4. d4. Yeah. yeah. Which leads to everything, <laughs> everything. I like bishop b5 check. This is what's called like the second main line. It's the second most popular thing played here. Guy does this. You trade. So, oh, that was my last game, right? Yeah, maybe. Like literally, yeah. might have been the most recent game that you played. What do you know about bishop for knight trade? Like anything? Like tell me, tell me what you know. Um, I mean, in general, this is rather new. I feel I rather. I value the bishops slightly more than uh, knights, so I rather keep them on the board than knights. Okay. Um, and trading for me mostly depends on what the result of the trade is, um, because obviously, like there's th this evaluation I've heard now. Like when I learned as a kid, it was three points and three points. Uh huh. But uh, now I feel like it seems to be that bishops are like what, like three point five, and uh, and knights only three. Is that is that correct, or like kind of the approximation, the idea of how they're generally valued? Uh yes, it's. I, I guess it's it's debated, but this is a very good time yeah. to talk about this because Alpha Zero, like the Google supercomputer, I think came out and said that knight is like three point zero five. Uh, and and uh, bishop is three point three seven or something like something very I don't know. Do you like computer chess? Like, what do you think? Yeah, I think okay. it's interesting. Okay. Um. So so in this specific case, I'm mostly thinking. Okay, like each of these each of these pieces has a certain value mm -hmm. in the context of all the other pieces, and so I felt like um, this is one that I would like to trade. But uh, you're probably going to tell me now why I shouldn't. No, no, it, it's it's completely fine. Uh, in fact, this is this is this is a decent trade for you. Uh, <laughs> and, and and the point is that now, one way for you to think about this is you you've given up your main light squared attacker, right? So 
Your dark squared bishop will never attack the light squares anymore. Uh, your two knights are 50-50. So black now has an advantage on the light squares because black has, mm -hmm. I guess, like, let's say, you know, 10 and 5, 15. Uh, yeah. Your two knights are 5. But what I like that you do here is you play d3 because uh, you're rebuilding on the light squares to counteract the bishop. And here you can even play h3. This is actually what the GMs usually do. They play these mm -hmm. two moves together. And now you see this bishop can't really come out. Yeah, I, I actually remember I, I was thinking after I moved um, that I liked h3. So mm -hmm. it, it's a, oftentimes it's, it's when I move that I realize afterwards, <laughs> like, oh, there's a move that yeah, but I like more. When you have a really solid playing style, it doesn't matter. Like, you, you castle, okay, like, that's completely fine. Um, your opponent plays e5. This is also, you know, this is a good move. Already, the center is more closed. Uh, closed position versus open position is, way I like to think about it, more pawns on the board. Because uh, pawns are kind of like, you know, the barrier between the two of you. So, here you play a move. I mean, this is how I know you're already, like, quite a strong player. You play knight e2. I don't know if you know what this is called. It has a term. You're rerouting your knight, right? So, okay. uh, and I'm sure, I don't even have to ask you. The point is that you can't go forward. So your knight is obviously better here. <clears throat> so bishop g4, you go here because you know, I, I think this is all good. And now this is the position where, where uh, champions are going to be made. So Yeah, it, it's, exa it's interesting that you say that because... I'm realizing now, yes, I was rerouting my knight, um, mm -hmm. but I actually feel like I, I, I kind of felt later in the position that, yes, it, it made sense in the moment. It's like, okay, there's not really mm -hmm. much value in that spot, but I actually I feel like I rather, I kind of want to attack on the queen side. Um, so, so it's 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 interesting that you say that. Uh, in in these kinds of positions, uh, it's let's say it's tough to pinpoint exactly where you need to break through. I <clears throat> I don't think that you're going to be able to attack on the queen side. You did. You played like here, here, here to spoil the surprise for the the, the viewers. But um, essentially, in in any middle game, there's plans with our pawns. And then there's plans with our pieces. So pawns and pieces, we can sp split that up. So a pawn plan can be either advancing somehow or offering some sort of trade, uh, something called a pawn break, which is in the position, something that you'd like to accomplish. So for example, two hypothetical moves. Pawn up. Like mm -hmm. that. If this trade happens, does this benefit your position? Like, what has that pawn trade done for the position? Yeah, I mean, I, I personally like it more. Because you like the open F file, maybe you're going to attack your bishop's active, right? So, yeah, position is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I like uh, it. But black has pawn breaks of their own, so where, where are black's pawn breaks? I think you can draw arrows with right click and drag. Right click. Yeah, I mean, I feel generally these make sense. Um, I mean, he could also do something Ooh. like that. Very good, yes. Very good. So you can rotate the knight backwards and you can play something like f5. Yeah, all these moves are interesting. and. It's the game is going to go on. So at this point, it's probably in the balance and it'll come down to, you know, let me ask you just a conceptual question. Do you think that you want to make this trade or keep the pawn where it is? I don't want to trade. I mean, it's kind of, I don't really, I would actually probably, hmm. First instinct was I don't want to trade. Um, That's interesting. It's like my, my thought process now was like, okay, I don't necessarily want to trade because I kind of, I don't want to release this double pawn uh, for him, mm -hmm. which I Good. think d6 is a pretty weak spot for him. So I don't want to like loosen that one. 
Um, but then I also felt like if he's trading, they have that single pawn on e4, which is pretty damn weak too. So I'm not sure. I I was like so so. Yeah, but you're you're correct in that taking here actually results in the undoubling of the pawns. But the better move, C takes D5 is the second best move, I, I think. I felt like I would have done this. Just play E5, probably. With, with white, just push the pawn. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Definitely. Or, or just leave it there. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press you even on this. Uh, you see the knight? The knight takes back in the center? Mm-hmm. So this is the best move. Okay. Why? But why is that the best move? Conceptually, I just want to hear, like, you know, I tell you it's the best move. But why would you explain that this is the best move? Um, I mean, it's a pretty bad spot for my bishop. Um, hmm, interesting. I can't find right away why. Why? I mean, you you gain the center and it just just looking at this because I can't even explain why. Just looking at it, I would choose uh, black over white right now. It, it doesn't feel great, and it doesn't yeah. feel great because you have to think every single time there's a trade, the position opens up more. Who wants an open position? The guy with the two bishops. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And you're, I like the first thing that you said. You said, uh, I don't see something right away. So that would mean you look at the most forcing moves for the opponent. Uh, if you've watched literally any video I have ever made or a stream, I always say checks, captures, attacks. So you're constantly looking at this, you know, you're looking at this, you're looking at maybe the queen comes in the future. Um, it's a very dangerous position because if something like this were to happen, that's going to be a problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> that does not look very good. And I think it just loses by force. I think like bishop here, the rook has to protect... I don't yep. know. This doesn't look. Yeah, this just in general, the whole just mm -hmm. doesn't look great. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so you're right. You're absolutely right. You don't want to make this trade. And for, for black, these pawn breaks are good because they benefit the bishop. So all of that ties back to this position. So you have a pawn break that you can make for yourself. You can also look for peace play, which is something like this and evaluating the trades, or something like potentially getting to that square. Mm -hmm. So this is not good because I'll take take and now you've given me the big center. Yeah. But it's still a game. I mean, that's just an option for you. Uh, another option for you is this knight rotating out this way. Try to go here. That fails for a tactical reason. So immediately black can play this move. Mm-hmm. And that's a problem, right? So uh, how are your puzzle solving skills? You like chess puzzles or you like to just play? I, I played a little bit. I like it, um, but I didn't, didn't grind. So I'm not, uh, I feel like I'm okay. I'm not, I'm not super trained at spotting it, but I, I think I'm okay. Yeah, again, puzzles are this very deceptive way of uh, channeling your improvement because you think that in a structured setting, you do everything correctly. It's very different than being out in the battlefield. So uh, in the game, we had c4. So c4 is, it, it's not a mistake by any stretch of the imagination, but it, it locks your structure. So you are now locked into this pawn structure for a while. Uh, <clears throat> guy goes rook b8, that's not a mistake. Queen a4, now you hit stuff. I like this. And uh, he plays this, which blunders a pawn. But... I, I was think I actually thought a minute or so on the spot because uh -huh. I I remember calculating this and then I think I just have one square which is this. I don't see your arrows. Are you drawing arrows? Oh sorry. No yeah. Whoop. Oh so it only moves in my way. Okay. Uh so if he goes this, uh -huh. I only have this. Yes. And then it's basically a draw because I just have two squares where I can move back and forth. Very nice. So you saw this move that he can t he can take away your escape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I was I I didn't want to because I felt I'm in a better position now. So I just felt like 
I don't take and take it later. So this is very good. Bishop d7, queen a6, and you realize that you know you're, you'll you'll have to repeat, or you have to go down here, and it's it's bad. It's not good. Now let me ask you. So let's draw these arrows. Little visualization exercise. Let's say here, mm -hmm. here, here, here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does this trap your queen? No, I can take. Okay, very good. So you just it's very easy for you to visualize that the bishop's in the way. Yeah, but still, I don't like the position. Yes. So <laughs> uh, and you're right. You're you're, you're actually completely correct. Um, I think because if if he goes bishop b7, like my mm -hmm. queen is in a pretty bad spot. I feel, or even yeah, even maybe just bishop d7. I don't know. Yeah, actually, here I can take away your queen's squares right away before I even play bishop c8. So I can play something like like this. And yeah. yeah, the queen the queen most likely is getting stuck. And you know, in the game he did this, you went back and you took a second pawn, which is very nice. Um and then you you kept focusing on that side of the board, but then he caught you. Yeah. That was uh I didn't see that one. So let's 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 play from here. Rather than playing, you know, B4 and focusing, right? We the, the lesson that we learned there, and that we're not going to make that same mistake again, because that's how chess works. Ideally, you mm. get hit with something once, and then you don't you know, make the same mistake again. You just don't want to lock your queen in with the other pieces, because something will happen somehow. Your you know your queen's going to be stuck. So rather than B4, take this to the next, you know. Conversion, like like finish this game off. You're up what two pawns? Two pawns, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's I, I generally I still really like B4 as an idea. Um because late I mean I definitely want to break through that way and have a pass pawn. Um but I would right now I feel obviously I, I don't want to blunder my queen. I would probably go for something like uh, knight f five, um, which I like. I also I also like trying to somehow get my knight to d5, which I haven't really thought how that might work. But oh, you um, can follow the path. Yeah, I mean, maybe even the one on f3 going like e1 and c uh, e, wait, e1 and c2 and just yeah. kind of seeing if because right now I feel I'm in a pretty decent position overall. Mm -hmm. Um, I also like activating my my bishop and uh, on c1 and bringing the other rook over and um, then going something like uh, b4, a4 and so on or or b4, b5 and so on. So um, and then the last move that I can think of is moving my queen back. Um, yeah, and then and then maybe looking for this plan. Uh, I think I think knight f five uh, is is the best because it it just threatens something and it improves your position. Mm -hmm. And the, the yeah, I like of... I like knight f five the most too because it's something he immediately has to respond to and might yeah, yeah might just blunder. Yeah, of course it's the it's the overloaded queen and if if rook to a eight. Um, you know, you can take, and obviously if takes, then takes. But I play something like here, uh, it might even be good for you to take everything. Just sacrifice your queen and make yeah. three pieces. Even though you, it might not be comfortable sacrificing your queen, because it's... Yeah, no, be, no. I, I, think it's, I think this is good. I like you're, that. You're a poker player, so you play... EV, you know, just EV. Yes, exactly. You know, I get three pieces, doesn't matter about my queen. Whereas some players are like, oh, my queen. Uh, but no, no. It's... If I get three pieces, then then it's all good. Um, yeah, yeah probably, is... probably like queen D2 is also. Mm -hmm. Combine these ideas and then go this way. Yeah. That's also another option. So uh, closed position pawn breaks. And you already, dude, you're like a freaking grandmaster of piece reroutes. I mean, Conceptually, people really struggle with like several knight moves, you know, to get to a better square. You're like, I need to get there. How do I do that? So it's really good. Uh, it's, it's it's really good to see that. Uh, for the Sicilian in in e4, one thing that you could try if you want, uh, you could play the Grand Prix, close Sicilian. I don't know if you have you. 
heard of the Grand Prix Close Sicilian? I've only I've only heard of it because I've seen your and Hikaru's uh, <laughs> video on openings, and I've seen that it ranked in I think it was legendary tier, but yeah. I did not check uh, what it is exactly. Generally speaking, you you have to. You have to think about it from the perspective of taking an opponent out of their comfort zone. So uh, if you know that the guy plays the Sicilian, they might have bought the most recent openings course on the Magnus Sicilian, you know, because Magnus Carlsen plays the Sicilian, or they play the Dragon Sicilian, which a lot of beginners play like this. And if you play close Sicilian, 90% of their expertise in the Sicilian goes like out the window. Okay. Now they have to deal with you and... If then you play in the same way, play the same way that you do, but you don't develop your knight, you develop the F pawn. Mm -hmm. Something like F4. This will become very useful when, when later you're castled. Mm -hmm. Because you'll, you'll have a king here, your rook will be more open, and you can use the pawn to attack. So in a perfect world, it looks something like this, where you have your very solid structure, you traded off that bishop, then you'll build up for this move with either, you know, this, 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 or even rotating your queen this way. So again, the benefit of playing f2 to f4 is that suddenly the queen's in the attack. And it's difficult because, again, you're, you come from poker, so I want to give you the best chances of winning the game and, and, and having like a smooth transition from opening to middle game. But you also don't want to feel like you're just, you know, try hard preparation and you're just going to try to beat people as fast as possible. So, uh, but the Grand Prix is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And just in general, these non-Knight F3 Sicilians, just with mm -hmm. F4 or something, would be something that you consider. Uh, there well, was like another, another game that i saw yeah this is this game this game i didn't look at this with my stream but i was doing my preparation you had black in this game you i mean i've played some pretty wild games lately so <laughs> it's just no wild is i don't i wouldn't i wouldn't call it i was wild. like wild in terms of i there were some massive blunders in there where i was running out of time because i sometimes i really like to take my time and think about just just think it through even though if i lose the game on time i don't care just because i like this the spot so no um, yeah there were some i i think that lost in a lot of the pog champs lessons is like you know a good lesson for like a 14 1500 rated player to try to get to 17 1800 because that's like that's hard i mean at that level you're you're really you're you're deep in a lot of battlegrounds a lot of your game should go 30 40 moves because you're not making silly mistakes uh, do you know how to flip it so that you you see it from Black's perspective? I have it Black. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, D4, D5 will lead to some of the most solid kind of defenses. Queen's Gambit declined uh, with Bishop B4. What do you usually do against this setup? So, what's your game plan? One, one question. Yeah, I, I, so normally I... What I just, this is actually, I, I've never actually really looked into theory there. The only stuff I remember is um, something like this developing, uh, whoops, that was wrong. Yeah, okay. Not, I don't know yet how to delete, but. Oh, just left uh, click anywhere or, or just redrag with the right. Okay. No, it doesn't work. Um, so just. Something like knight to d7, knight f6, c6. Um, that's kind of the moves I remember uh, from Queen's Gambit. Yeah, Queen. There, there's chapters. So that's the best way to think about it. There's, there's branches. You know, Queen's Gambit is just d4, c4 against the d pawn. Yeah. If you don't play it, obviously it's not a gambit. It's just a setup. But. Uh, the, the best way to play this uh, is save this move. Don't play, don't play this move yet. Okay. Uh, this is the, you know, in my opinion, this is, this is the best. I like, I like this kind of initial setup. And then I really like uh, the setup where the bishop comes to b4, which is what you did. In this particular case, 
you ended up having to trade because he just offered you a trade of bishops, and that's fine. Uh, the problem with c6 is that, again, you traded your dark squared bishop. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So now you're rebuilding on the light squares. So your setup is very solid, but it's very passive. I don't know if that's something you experience when you play with the black pieces, but it's not always so pleasant. So, but this is a bad move. Yeah. Why? Uh, I couldn't give you a proper explanation. It just feels, <laughs> just feels bad. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it doesn't do enough. It's, it's like a waste I, and... It's just like... I think to me, it just feels like oftentimes I'm not thinking like, oh, this is a bad move for this and this reason. It's just compared to other moves. Also, it relatively just feels like it's not accomplishing anything. So I feel in this situation, I just really want to develop my e-pawn to um, open up my bishop to castle mm -hmm. to just do more than C5. I feel like is not, I don't have the, the bishop anymore. So I feel C5 is not accomplishing much right here. And it's just right. rather weakening my structure, so I don't really like that move so much. Or his. Yeah, yeah, no, and I mean, exactly what you said, like, e5 is a good move. I know it seems weird to, like, be analyzing move 5 or 6 in the position, but it's important because it's, it's kind of conceptually understanding why a move like this is inaccurate. So I like all this, and you're right, you need to push for, for this. But that happened? So Not really, no. <laughs> Basically, if you play queen e7 and e5, yeah. your position's perfect. Like it's, it's exactly what you want. Yeah. Opening in the center, winning the battle for the center, whether it's through trading a pawn or something like this. Like Black is happy here. Black is very happy because bishop, castle, this is weak. Mm -hmm. These pawns are something that's called overextended. It's because they're not, they have no future moving forward. But in the game, he did like very aggressive pawn pushes. Mm -hmm. uh, and bishop e2, very nice. Now, I like this. I like rook b8. I think it's a good move, just activating the rook. Uh, you can also play e5 now. Mm -hmm. Because if he takes for a moment, you just move and both pawns are under attack. So... Like, just for a moment, it's very, it's very difficult. I mean, you're, I'm not, you're not going to go here, but the point is that this knight is defending this knight and this pawn. Mm -hmm. If he castles, uh, at least this knight will not be able to protect this pawn any longer. Mm -hmm. But rook b8 is good. It's a good move. Uh, now, again, here, I'm the, the best move for black... Is uh, it's it's advanced. I mean, it's not a be it's not a beginner concept, which is why this lesson is so great. The best move is bishop a six. It's interesting because I, I um, I remember that game as well, and mm -hmm. I thought about this move already. Like the past four moves, I I kind of saw it and I liked it, but I didn't see what it accomplishes much in this exact spot because it's basically okay. I trade and then I have my queen there. Mm -hmm. um so i think that's where i felt like okay like i because i don't see an immediate reason why i don't do it kind of thing yeah it's it's difficult because in queen's gambit positions what you just said you don't see an immediate plus or minus but conceptually speaking your bishop sucks but you've completely rebuilt everything already and it has no future on this side see if your bishop was on f5 black would probably be better your position would simply be better right now it's equal probably but because your bishop would be much stronger than the counterpart but on this square at least you trade and then and then life goes on and as i just said last game you're gonna have to win this game with your pieces and your pawns and with your pawns most likely it's gonna be this it's gonna what be about what about this mm -hmm. and then developing the bishop through this side isn't this isn't this better uh so you mean it like the, what happened in the game oh did it you played rookie eight yeah so I, I guess you were trying to set this up so yes that also would be a plan now 
white should work very quickly to stop that from happening. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're you're a hundred percent right. Rookie eight and trying to push up like this is is also very good. Now, actually, what I should do there is I shouldn't even take. Mm. Yeah, that I makes should, sense. Yeah, I yeah. should leave it and make you take. Yeah. So I still cannot move the knight. So knight yeah. b3 is a is an okay move. It's not a not a great move. Queen b4. Uh, rook Here b1. I like, yeah, I like queen c7 more. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Queen c7 is definitely better. From, from these two games, I notice you hunt with your queen. Some hunting, some very active queen play. But it, it, the queen needs to have a target. Yeah. Or the queen needs to be untouchable. So put it on a square like this. Where it just monitors stuff, you know? But it's not a target. Mm -hmm. It cannot be targeted. I mean, queen c1 is a trade. It's not a target. Uh, I like queen c7. I think queen c7 might have been the best. Uh, very tough to tell what's the best here. But I like this the most. And try to push for e5. Yes, definitely. I mean, probably also... This, this, this then becomes again. Mm -hmm. That might be an upside for your idea of uh, bishop a6. Yes, if you put, if you put the, the queen out this way, you'll at least always have bishop a6. Or even queen a4. I mean, queen a4 doesn't look like it does much, but queen c7 definitely. You see, you give him ideas now by putting the queen here. And he plays a5, knight d2. Um, and then, you know, makes this trade and then plays queen b3. This guy's got a very solid playing style. He immediately trades your queen. And what do you notice about this pawn? Overextended. <laughs> it's overextended. It's, it's actually, it's crazy. We can't defend that pawn and, and we're playing without the presence of the bishop. So a5, knight, knight a, uh, a4, knight a5. And now you play here with an interesting idea uh, to try to play knight c3, but he plays bishop d1, which is very professional. It's very very professional. Professional move, yeah. It's a bad move, but it's a professional move. What, what should he do here? Uh, probably stop you from playing knight c3. So something like rook c1. Yeah, I was about to mark the same, yeah. Or, or how about this? Rook here, walking into this fork, but then he takes the knight. Yeah. So the real question is, oops, who is better here? Let's say, play, well, king h1 is actually surprisingly better than king f1. Let's test your, uh, your, your, your tactic skills. Why is king f1 not so great? I mean, I mean I'm immediately thinking uh, bishop a6. But that is going to be the point, point. yes. But I can't, right? So, well, how do you make Bishop A six possible while also dealing damage? Knight G three, yes, but Knight G three, I just move my king, right? And uh -huh. then you haven't won anything. The, you would deal damage by at least taking one pawn. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and now if I take, then Bishop A six, and actually Black is winning. <laughs> Black is is winning because you're winning the rook for free, and it's discovered check. But seeing that in the span of a game is tough because you just see this and you go, oh, shit, you know, I got it. And, mm -hmm. um, that's why king h1 is better. And from a strategic standpoint, black is pretty screwed. Uh, I don't know how you're going to fight back here. He plays bishop d1. And I like, I like a3. Um, and then you came up with this idea to sacrifice your own pawn but go for this guy. Yeah, it didn't work out entirely well, but uh... it didn't. Oh, but this is this is great. So the last five moves from here, from here to here, it looks like not much has changed. But he won your c6 pawn. Yeah. But at what cost? To quote Thanos, I think. At what cost did he win a pawn? I mean, basically, most likely losing this one, or at least having to park his rook at a1, and yes. it's kind of getting a bit messy. Yeah, so there's already some middle and endgame stuff here. He, he won your pawn, which was the biggest weakness. 
that was your biggest weakness. There's just no question. I mean, it was stuck. No pawns can defend it. Um, and I'll show you also how to just avoid this kind of pawn structure. But you did great. You locked down that pawn. And now I would play rook b8 here. Mm -hmm. I didn't? Bishop, no, bishop b5, which is not a bad move. Because I, maybe you were thinking uh, to go here. But I like, I like this one more because then after, now I'm blocking... I'm yes. blocking the path. So I like the other the other way around. I like it more. Yeah, I think is... I think I was yeah. But Bishop B5 is definitely not not some sort of and also there's a very famous trap here, which a lot of beginners blunder. Unfortunately, you're not playing, you know, beginners. It's like this trap. They yeah. attack the rook and then they run into this. I think I think he did that later. Really? I think so, yeah. Oh, very I think good. that's how I won the game, yeah. Okay, perfect. So your pressure paid off. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think right here is another instructive moment. Rather than defend your pawn, I think sacrificing it and getting really active pieces is the way to go. It would be too. Mm -hmm. uh, which is really difficult to kind of conceptualize at first, but the point is you're completely dominating him. He cannot move anything at all. And if he plays knight e5, he just attack his knight here you keep attacking him just just can't move any pieces like he can't move his rook his knight this knight uh, and so on but yeah in the game you you got it to an end game and yes i do see rook c1 and then he blunders knight e2 check yeah tragic tragic <laughs> tragic tragic uh here you are in trouble but only if he plays king f1 to just not get hit with that. Mm -hmm. That's and then, and then he starts. But again, you. I mean, you still have your rook a four, rook b eight, etc. To try to you know bring down here. But he should have been patient with these pawns, and instead he ran them down the board. And the last twenty moves of the game is just you uh, stalling for fun because you like. No, I had like I had like five seconds left. I so know. I... Yeah. <laughs> Do you play with bonus time or no bonus? No. I should. I should though. It's more. I. I'm like one third of my games. I'm uh, fifty seconds less uh, or less. So. Yeah, I. You know, increment. I. I don't play increment. I play three minute basically always. Uh, even five minute is like too fast, and I've played some thirty second games. That was, I think, as, as fast as I ever played. I've, se I've seen uh, uh, Naroditsky play some. This oh, is yeah. Absolute, it's... absolute insanity. Right? Yeah, he, the fact that he's even able to play quality chess. It's, I was watching. I, I think I wouldn't be, like, it was hard to follow. And I mm -hmm. don't even know how he plays. Like, it's incredible. So for uh oh wow whoops i was following a we just did these sub battles earlier and i had a guy this game just started so for the opening in um in queen's pawn if you play d4 d5 mm -hmm. uh knight f3 i recommend knight f6 okay because it's the most flexible move you're gonna play this move no matter what and you the thing is you don't block in your bishop yeah so i actually it's so interesting because I, I think I remember I was like ten or nine or something, mm -hmm. and one of the first things they told us like, oh, you have to you have to play kind of like it was e six, um, knight f six, and uh, c six and knight d seven. I remember this was the thing we learned, and I remember as a child always thinking this is so dumb that like the that we cannot develop the knight on c8 at all so yeah. i actually i do like keeping that option open so this uh, d5 and knight f6 is basically always going to happen uh i like to keep the option for the bishop out here for example if white plays queen's gambit style mm -hmm. then you do need to keep the bishop a little bit more restrained uh i'll tell you why the biggest danger is queen b3 mm -hmm. and that queen move will put pressure on both your sender and the b7 pawn and it can be 
tricky to recover if you get caught in the opening with some crap like this. So mm -hmm. uh, it's it's better to keep it open. But if white plays like g3, okay, great. Boom. We're happy. And then this will be defended because in the future we always have queen c8 or even just b6, c6. Bishop's out. Not to mention, I mean, if you really want to be exotic, you strike me as a very solid player, but uh, you want I to like be like... exotic. Oh, exotic is good. I mean, I long like castle. Creative. So, like this. You know, queen d7, go for bishop h3, castle long. But very da it could be dangerous because white can attack your king as well. I'm getting asked, isn't this a reverse London? Yes, it is a reverse London. Or, if you'd like... Another option is to go all the way for the knight. And just like in that first game we analyzed, like bishop knight trade, what this does for the what this does for the center of the board is you'll rebuild on the light squares. You traded your light square bishop, but then the move c5 is super useful for black in queen's gambit positions. Uh because it, it's basically you're doing the same thing back to them, if that makes sense. And that will help you develop all your pieces more yeah. actively. So in a Queen's Gambit with, let's say, very standard. So go play Bishop B4, and then I'll show you kind of how to put it all together. Like how to put the entire structure together. Uh, so Bishop B4 from black. Yeah, you, you, you can play it. You can play Anymore? it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can. You ha yeah, I do. You have that power. Uh, it basically the rule is if the bishop gets attacked, then you take the knight. Mm -hmm. If not, then it uh, completely okay. And you'll try to castle. So let's say you know, uh, I don't know, e three, something like castles. Black. What? But what's the what's the main move here? Isn't the main move for white a three or? Well, at main move at, at GM level, main move at 1400 level could be slightly different. <laughs> uh, we could look at A3, sure. A3 is, is a good thing to start with. Let's say A3. What's GM level play here? Like knight, uh, like uh, bishop d2 or uh, knight d2 or? So this is the Ragozin defense. Uh, GMs generally play bishop to g5. So you each pin. Uh, and I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of different things, but normally black blows up the center with something like c5, or you can take the pawn and try to run away with it. So, for example, if I play e3, you use this pin, you play b5. Oops, mm -hmm. and now I'm not able to win this back so easily because of the pin. Normally, I would just take this guy, but now it's impossible. And if a4, you have to guard with the correct pawn, guard with the c pawn. If you guard with the a pawn, that, that would be tragic. So we don't want that to happen. But there's like ways to kind of grab the pawn early and, and, and not let it go. I mean, you also can literally play the queen's gambit accepted. And the queen's gambit accepted is interesting. It's not great if you don't like to play with a giving away the center but there's a lot of ways to try to hang on to this pawn like playing a very quick a6 and b5 mm -hmm. so if i play like you know e3 uh there's positions where you can just hang on to this pawn for dear life and just say okay i have an extra pawn develop my pieces but i i like to go like this against queen's gambit accepted get my light squared bishop out e6 knight bishop castle everything is good mm -hmm. As far as these positions go that you're playing with the Queen's Gambit declined, there's this Bishop B4 option, which puts some pressure, like I said, uh, and the very classical approach of Bishop back to E7, which you said that th that's what they taught you. Um, and I'll tell you that this is all good, this is great, but don't just rush this move. Mm -hmm. Don't just rush this move. Uh, play B6. And then you have to go for the c5 move at some point. I'm generally, like generally uh, g6 or like Fianchetto feels, uh, not in this position, but generally like uh, b6, g6, like Fianchetto feels so good, I feel. Mm -hmm. 
it's just something I would like to learn more about. I never really, I started playing it a bit more, but uh, I feel it's just so strong. It's 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 very good actually. I what I started doing is I started experimenting with Tufi and Kettos against everything, uh, except against King's Pawn. So if it's like C4, for example, I'll play like B6 and like this. And I give away the center for now, but then I'll play like and I, and I'll do some weird stuff with the pawn structure. So even a position where they have full space like this is not so scary if you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm.